e pente. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Keith Paints. Today, I'm painting a half-orc model by Titan Forge Minis, one of their Titans of Adventure. This is also part of my Goobertown Roulette Season 3 entry. Here are the random inspirations for this model. Her theme is deep reflection, thoughtful, possible melancholy. Her main color is blue. Her secondary color is green. And a new technique to try is freehand. Tattoos, graffiti, heraldry. As usual, I went through the process of creating a D&D &D character with these random attributes and then used that as inspiration for the paint job. So let's build a half-orc barbarian. This is Volan. It's not entirely unheard of for humans and orcs to work together. Half-orcs, as the name implies, are what happens when these alliances are sealed with marriage. Bigger and stronger than humans, smarter and more versatile than orcs, half-orcs would seem to have the best of both worlds, but their appearance can hinder their existence. Amongst orcs, they have to work twice as hard to gain acceptance, and some become mighty chiefs. That didn't seem very likely for Volan, as an adventurer though, so I needed a reason for her to have left her tribe. I decided she was strong enough to lead a tribe, she just didn't have the numbers, and her and the other half-orcs were ejected from the tribe. Amongst humans, half-orcs are frightening due to their large size and violent orcish nature. So Volan and her few followers joined a mercenary group where her barbarian class would come into good use. Half-orcs, it would seem, are made for the barbarian class. Driven by fury and rage, they unleash it in battle with the ferocity of a cornered beast. For some, it is pure rage that drives them. The Berserker archetype would be the typical half-orc barbarian build, but I wanted Volan to have a little more depth, so I chose the Totem Warrior path. Totem Warriors are on a spiritual journey guided by a ferocious animal spirit. Had I built the character before printing the model, I might have switched this little skull here for a wolf skull because that is what I chose for her animal spirit. After leaving her tribe, a great majestic wolf came to her in a dream and led her to a town where a mercenary group was hiring. They liked the toughness of half-orcs, but not the idea of paying them their fair share, and spent their lives cheaply. A rabble of mostly new recruits, along with the half-orcs, and a bluish-brown dragonborn were sent on a flanking mission intended as a distraction, knowing full well that they would be overwhelmed and likely destroyed by the enemy. In battle, the majestic wolf in her mind became a snarling beast, and she tore through everything in front of her. She could see there was little chance of survival. They didn't have the numbers. She just kept hacking away at everything she could see. Eventually horns blew, and much of the enemy started moving off. But she wasn't finished yet, and she was surprised to find that she wasn't alone. The dragonborn was at her back, his battered shield blocking every blow. The two of them were surrounded by remnants of the enemy host, closing in for the kill. It was then that the dragonborn played his final card. Roaring, he breathed lightning into the crowd, frying a dozen and frightening the rest enough that when Volan took the cue to rush twenty men, they broke and ran to join their departing army. So you might presume I would go with the soldier background, but she didn't really grow up as a soldier. She grew up as an orc. She's more of an outlander, I think. Something like a tribal marauder, but also definitely an outcast. She cares little for social trappings, though she does her best not to sneer. No point offending people that will already be offended by her appearance. She's something of a stoic. She didn't spend much time as a soldier, but she did form a bond as one. Her and Torin, the Dragonborn, became adventuring partners after that battle. It seems a little sappy. Someone saved my life, now I won't leave them behind. But it's more of a surrogate tribal structure for both of them. And as a flaw, she's definitely slow to trust basically anyone. And violence is pretty much her go-to answer for most things. Though Torin is trying to teach her restraint. 
and check out my last video which was about him. I started by basing the cloth bit with Dark Reaper and her skin with Incubi Darkness. As it turns out, these are basically the same color. I like to do the eyes early in the process as I will likely mess them up and it's easier to fix with just a base coat on the face. I used Mornfang Brown on her axe handle and Rhinox Hide for the leather bits. I mixed some Cadian Flesh Tone into the Incubi Darkness and used it to highlight the skin. It worked pretty nicely, not quite as green as I would like, but alright. Then I tried mixing in some Kislev Flesh and going a little bit brighter. I still wanted it to be more green though. So I tried giving it a wash with Athonian Camo Shade, but I didn't like the result. I think there's too much blue in the Incubi Darkness, and the bright green over top didn't look right. After basing fur and bone bits with Xandri Dust, I went over the skin again with Incubi Darkness. I was ready to completely start the skin over, but one coat actually toned down the brightness enough that I just moved on to the Cadian Flesh Tone Incubi Darkness highlights. I don't think I did the second highlight this time, but I did mix a little Abaddon Black into the Incubi Darkness and painted that into the creases to try and raise the contrast a little. I was very gentle though, and I'm not sure it made much of a difference. I thinned some corn red and glazed it over her lips, then used White Star to pick out her two exposed teeth. I got a big spot on the bottom lip. But when I glazed over it again with the corn red, it kind of faded into a nice highlight, so I left it like that. I finished basing all the fur and bone with the Xandri dust. I layered and edge highlighted different leather bits with Gorthor Brown. I really like the combination of Rhinox Hide and Gorthor Brown for leather. They work really well together. I gave the fur and bone a wash with Seraphim Sepia. I've painted quite a few bases like this now. I base tiles with Dawnstone, then stipple on a second layer. The leaves get Elysian Green. I usually wash them with Agrax Earthshade and highlight the tiles with Celestor Grey, but I'm not sure I remembered to highlight them this time. I'm pretty sure I gave the blue cloth a wash with Nagaroth Nightshade at some point. Now it's time to texture it. If you've been watching my channel, you will probably know that I've been working on hatching cloth a lot lately. I really like the look of it, and thought it would be a good use of her primary color. I crosshatched McCrag Blue all over the cloth, then Thunderhawk Blue higher up, and finally Rust Gray just down the peaks of the folds and the edges. I layered Yushati Bone onto the bone and hatched it across the fur bits on her greaves, like there is some thread or cord stitched in to secure the ends. I come back and tip the rest of her fur with it a little later. Her axe handle I based with corn red. Her hair, which I based earlier with Abaddon Black, I highlight with Mechanica Standard Grey. All the metal bits I base coat with Lead Belcher. They get a wash of Agrax Earthshade along with the base, and a wash of Nulm Oil as well. I stipple Ironbreaker over most of the metal to give it a bit of a hammered metal look, and then stipple on highlights with Runefang Steel. Volan and her partner Torin sell their blades as mercenaries under the name The Blue Axes, so I stained her axe blue like Torin's with Nagaroth Nightshade. And though I initially forgot about her heraldry, I eventually came back and painted a blue-bladed axe on her pauldron, also like Torrent. And then I used some weathering powder, really just a ground-up pastel, to make her feet and base look dirty. And that is Volan, the half-orc barbarian complete. The skin and cloth blended together a little more than I would have liked, but I didn't want to experiment a second time on the skin, so I just stuck with what had worked the first time. 
What do you think? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.